Hey, thank you for stopping by www.scottnelsonandson.com or if you found me on YouTube, that's awesome. I try to post the videos occasionally showcasing artwork or talking about the, my trade. And um, I recently got a request to do a longer video that was a little more instructional rather than the shorter videos I've been doing. And um, so, so I guess I'd give that a try today. So if you're interested in following along, Wee. Maybe you'll be interested. Let's get going. So I tell my students to always be drawing, always be illustrating, always be getting, keeping your hand moving. So I have to do that myself. So I have a little sketch pad, and I'm teeny tiny. I have it with me almost all the time. And one day I was doing lots of different sketches from kids and throwing frisbees to giraffes that were playing soccer to you name it. I was doing it that particular day. And this particular sketch kind of jumped out at me on my little rough, rough hair of maybe some bears at a carnival or a circus inside a bumper car area. And I just, I'm a big fan of cars, and I said I like drawing bears. It might be fun to draw and um, might make a good portfolio piece or something that can be used to promotion on my website. So I decided to say, all right, this is the one for no rhyme or reason other than just, I just thought it would be fun to draw. So I then have to kind of update that sketch, and this is what I came out with when I took it to the next level. I said, okay, well, should it be just two bears bumping into each other, or should they be additional animals? Um, and then I said, you know what? The bear, you know, when I originally drew it, he was very small, probably up to about the nose area. And I said, it just wasn't really grabbed my attention that it was really a bear. And I said, but a bear should be kind of threatening, and, and even though I'm, I always think bears are f fun to draw, I said, right, he should be more noticeable in the drawing. So I enlarged them. I did another quick sketch just to make them bigger. I said, all right, that looks better. I erased the first guy. Kind of re-sketched him in here to get the right the right size wise. And um, I said, all right, I think that's going to work. So again, that was my original sketch. Really fast. Again, sketch probably took less than a minute, maybe a little over a minute. And I did this. And that probably took maybe, because it's a little more effort, Maybe 10 to 15 minutes. But again, if you notice the line work here, it's all super, super sketchy. There's not a lot of details. You can see adjustments. Just And, and what I'll do now is when I'm going to transfer this to the illustration board or to the watercolor paper that I'm going to paint the final one on, um, you're going to see that I might re even re resize and change things around a little bit too. Scale-wise, I'm not sure if this cat is in the correct scale size. Maybe he should be bigger. Um, I also don't know if that fox is kind of invading into the area of the, the the bear area. I want to show that the little rabbit's bumping into the, the big strong bear. I'm not sure if that's distracting from the scene. So that's going to be something I'll probably work out when I transfer it to the watercolor paper. But I wanted to show you that the, um, the, the drawing is always kind of being manipulated right up until I start painting. All right. So I struggle with the white balance on this camera when I'm just just shooting a white piece of paper. But um, so I have some things in the background that'll hopefully knock that down. But um, so I can't really zoom in to show you. But real quickly, um, I transferred that sketch to my watercolor paper. I'm using some cold press, 140 pound, because um, I, like I said, I do paint traditionally. And things of note, when I talked about before, um, I really want to zoom in on the main character bear here and the bunny slamming into each other. So that'll kind of be the, the joke. So that'll be the thing that I want people to key in on. So I did lower the fox that was driving the bumper car down below. I lowered him or her um, lower in the scene. Um, I drew the cat at the bottom here. I probably better show you the sketch again. The sketch. Um, the cat I drew a little bit larger. I drew the um, this dog. I think it stayed pretty much the same. But um, So I think bottom line is there was only a few minor adjustments. But what I do also want to point out is sometimes I refer, I've seen humorous illustrators use this word and um, I, they call it googly eyes. It's just a style that um, sometimes artists use, and myself included, that I draw, tend to draw a real big circle um, for an eye. You know, you draw a pupil in the middle and that's kind of the expression. The problem with that is if you don't really do much with the eye, it tends to lay just like googly-eyed, I guess. So what I'm going to try to work on here is make sure that I show a lot of expression with this bear. I want to have him frowning like he's annoyed. Um, the little bunny character here, same thing, angry. Um, the other characters, their eyeballs, instead of just being a circle with a dot, you want to lead your, your, your viewer 
to what you want them to see. So the fox eyes eyes will be leaded this led this way. You know, same thing with all the other characters looking at what you want the person to look at. Because these are all secondary characters in the scene that you want them to focus on is essentially the humor here. Um, so when you are doing your own drawings, same thing. You're supporting cast characters. Have them looking at what you want the viewer to look at because it, that's what's important. It's the main picture. Everything else is just extra, you know, background filler. So even though it's a complicated drawing, the thing I want people to look at is this way. I'll probably start fooling around with the colors to it, a key in on, maybe a bright red, something that I'll immediately go to that'll key in on these characters. So all little tricks I just wanted to talk about. So next part is to start painting. All right, before I jump into doing the actual painting, though, I have to try to figure out what style of painting I'm going to paint in. Um, there's, for myself, I, as I've mentioned before, I'm, I'm kind of a traditional artist. I like to work on watercolor paper canvases and illustration board. I scan it and then I manipulate it as needed. Um, so my original art will always 99% well, be a flat piece of art. So there's a lot of different ways to do the, the final art. For example, um, right here is I penciled out my little dog character here and I painted in the colors, real quick colors of him. Okay, I'm then going to come over here with my ink in a second I then will paint around the paint. So it'll be Color first, dry, then paint. In this case, I'm actually using watercolor. I'm a waterproof ink. I actually will do the ink in first. I'll then come in and I will start to fill in the paint as needed. Okay. A real quick version here, sorry. And then the third version will be to not actually use ink and just go with total with, with colors. Just paint the colors and then if I do want to edge around them, sometimes you go without. You let a color butt up against it and don't even put an edge. But in this case, I thought it was important to actually indicate it on this white paper. But you actually just use colors. Never use your, your uh, black ink. So color. Let's go back here. Right. Paint on that. First one is color and ink I'm trying to go real fast here so you don't, I don't bore you I get the idea or paint the ink in first and then color color fill or don't use ink at all and just use all colors. So what I'm going to do for this illustration, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to still fool around with it. Um, try to figure that out as I go along. But I'm leaning towards maybe doing colors only. Maybe make it more of an illustration as opposed to cartoony. But just want to let you know that there's a lot of ways to tackle an illustration. You know, whatever you feel comfortable with is the most important thing. And the end result is what you want it to be. So, all right, let's get rocking and rolling. Okay, so I did some painting already, and I just want to talk about that before I move on. In the background of my my bumper cut area, I went with a very simple sky. I could have done a circus. I could have people looking inside of it. Um, but I really want the focus to be on the image that I'm trying to show here. So I kept with something very basic that you, you notice that it's inside a, a bumper cut area, but the fact is, you know, it's not detracting from what you're looking at. I also went with some gray tones for the inside of the bumper car area. Again, gray, I thought would be a nice neutral color, so it wouldn't, if it was something really bright, it actually might take away from it. Um, and what I'm also going to do is that, those colors I used right there, this is watercolor. This is actually opaque, more like an acrylic base. I mixed up some gray tones here using just simple black, white paints and some different tints that I used. Um, and um, I actually, I do that a lot. I actually mix my media. Um, but in this area, with the bumper car area, is going to be probably like a hardwood floor. I think that's how they usually run them. Um, I'm going to do it a, water, a watercolor tone in that area. That way I can show some wood tones. And, um, you know, again, not to detract, but just to show that it's more a little more realistic. So next time I show you, that should be a little more painted. Just want to talk about the way I'm proceeding. 
And a quick change of plans, um, I did some research and I found out that the inside of bumper car areas are actually have rubber floors, they're not hardwood like I thought they were. Um, for safety reasons, that makes a lot of sense. And But um, rubber floors, I noticed that they would have been really dark, everything inside here would have been really dark. I said, you know what, Let me. it's a children's book illustration, let me go with a lighter color that's more you know, visually friendly, um, still won't detract from the, the characters in their cars. And um, I think that'll work. I, um, I did go with the uh, opaque paint, mix up some color right here, and I want an opaque paint as opposed to the watercolor like I thought it would, but um, I'm always willing to make changes as needed, and if I decide I need to go darker with that floor, I can still do it. Um, and I probably mentioned this before, I just want to make sure, I always, I usually paint the backgrounds first, and then I put the, the characters in second, that way I don't, if I did the characters first and I had to paint around it, it would be actually more time consuming, it just wouldn't look as good. Um, but these are just small little details, but I want you to realize when you're doing things, you sometimes just go with the flow. Okay, I've done some more paint into it so far, and I just want to quickly talk about it. Um, rather than using watercolor as this I initially planned, um, it seems like I keep changing my mind as I'm moving along, but that's okay. Um, bumper cars in general are made out of hard plastic or metal, so I want to go with more of an opaque look to it, so it looked like it was a hard substance and you couldn't see through it. And then I decided to, after that was over, I added some uh, black to each one of those colors I mixed. See my little paint here? And uh, to make the bumper themselves. So um, I was trying to stay away from doing anything that's super dark. Um, you know, it's to take away from the main characters. But rubber is dark, so what am I going to do? Um, so I just wanted to show you how I, how I proceeded. And as I put a few more details down, I will then start painting the main characters, and that's where the watercolor should kick in. Hopeful that it really will um, really make them pop, and there'll be a big contrast. So, onwards and upwards. Well, I just about finished up the painting portion of the illustration here, and before I scan it and then do some digital corrections and, and get rid of some blemishes and things, I thought I'd point out a few a few things. For the most part, I think I'm, I'm happy with the fact that there's a good contrast between the animal characters and the bumper cars. I thought that was important, and um, for the most part, I think it's successful. Um, another thing I want to talk about is... In the upper portion of the drone, in a real bumper car area, you have an electrical grid that kind of goes across the top. And the, those bars that come off of the little cars here drag along and offer electricity to them, and that's what makes them move along. I think when I scan it, I will then, you know, use my drawing program and throw that in there and see if I like it. I don't want to dis distract from it, the artwork. But if, the, if it works, great. And if it's not, I can just hit delete. I've also talked about in, in the past how I have always considered myself to be more of a traditional artist. I like to use paints and drawing and, you know, kind of an old, old school approach, but I, that's how I like to draw. I do have a few drawing programs. And before I do start working with them, I want to talk quickly about how in the corners here, if you notice, I took the artwork right up to the edge, and which is fine, but there is something to be said in the industry when you're doing artwork called the bleed area and the, li the live space. So I, I cut out a piece of paper here so I can quickly talk about it. This is really rudimentary, but you'll get the idea. Um, so I'll lay it on top here. Hopefully line it up. All right. There we go for the most part. Okay, so the live space for what your, your viewers will see is anything inside of this border. Anything in the border and beyond is called the bleed area. Typically you want to have at least like a quarter inch of a bleed area. Um, in the old days they used to wrap the artwork around a, a scanner drum and as to before the scanner would actually pick up the artwork it would really, it, would, it wouldn't grab the edge so there'd always be that kind of like that gray area before it starts to read it and then so you want to have something important right on the edge. So when I'm laying out some artwork and doing my design, I always make sure there's nothing important under, in the bleed area. For example, here at the bottom, 
you know, you can still see that the the animals at the bottom are in the bumper cars, but if the bleed area, you know, co covers that up, it's not a big deal. I just lose a little, you know, the headlights on them and, you know, not a big deal. But again, make sure when you lay out your artwork, you never have something really important that goes right up to the edge. Because it, there's a chance, depending on how it's printed, that it won't be seen. All right. So I am now going to scan it. And I will quickly talk about some of the things I'm going to do there and I think wrap this up. I am going to set the resolution to 400 for this piece of artwork. Here we go. From, from my original sketch of two bears playing bumper cars, I changed it up. I changed it from two bears to one. Made that bear bigger, a little more dominant. I then hand painted it. And then scanned it, uploaded it, and made some small digital corrections. Some of the colors a little more richer. I added that electrical grid at the top of the bumper car area. Came out okay. So there's my children's book sample. So if you have any questions, email me at nelsonandson at juno.com or check out my website at www.scottnelsonandson. I hope you enjoyed this longer video. Keep drawing. Have a good day.